Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Can you believe it is Friday? And we're just uh, slightly over a week away from Thanksgiving. And we thank God, or maybe slightly less. But today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about how not to settle for an average life. It is so important to understand that you were made never to be an average individual. God has made you above average. And average people will only have average results. And we were made uh, to be the head and not the tail, the Bible says. God bless you, Roscoe. And my wife, Liz, bless you, love you all. We were made to be the head and not the tail. God does not want us to be any lesser than the best. His word tells us that we are more than conquerors. Now, uh, how do I avoid becoming an average a person? That is very important. You see, you've got to take back the power that you have given your circumstances or any relational uh, situation or where you've placed yourself under a system to be controlled. The only control is to be under the influence of of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, we must avoid allowing any power to rest in someone else's hands that can strip you of your freedom in Christ Jesus and your freedom to be yourself. It is very important. You've got to believe in yourself. God bless you, my Lizzie. Love you lots. Let me put that name on the broadcast here. There she is. Yep. Hallelujah. And there's somebody else watching all the way from South Africa. And every other person watching today, write a little comment if you want to. I can bring it up on the screen. Now, how to avoid an average life. In fact, God's word actually says, we either hot or you cold. But there's no average. There's no lukewarmness. There's, there's no in-between. He wants us to be so focused on being the best for him. Hallelujah. Even Jesus said that the best, God bless you, watching from Sullivan, Hallelujah, Todd. Bless you richly and your wife and so forth and the family. <laughs> uh, God wants us to be the best. Jesus even said that the best is yet to come. We have to have a vision, a focus to become the best that we can be for God. Amen. Uh, you've got to watch out. And be alert so that your desires inside of you will attract what will bring out the best in you. If your desires are attracting things that wants to reduce your self-esteem, if your desires attract things where you live a life of compromise, when you know the truth, and not practicing the truth, you cannot be set free. You see, some folk think that by just knowing the truth, you'll be set free. It does not work like that. Jesus says, ye who hold onto these teachings shall know the truth, and they shall be set free. Hallelujah. And that is so criteria. To understand by just being affiliated or associated with Christianity or 
thinking well I'm just reading a few scriptures today please do and by just going through the motions does not set you free is it is applying the truth by applying what you've read by applying what you've heard that will truly set you free and position you above an average life avoid following the crowd and be truthful to yourself what motivates and what builds you up anything that breaks you down you know words can either build up or break down and I want to unravel a revelation here today. And uh, I actually shared this with some other folk. And that is when Jesus in Mark chapter 16, I believe it should be right about uh, 17, 18. You, you'll find there. Uh, when Jesus says, when you drink deadly poison, no harm shall come unto you. How do we drink? How do you drink deadly poison? Not physically, that's not what he meant. When you drink deadly poison, is when you in the company of words, and those words are uh, 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 making you conscious of being feeling rejected, words that makes you that wants to break you down, Words that wants to remove the life and zeal enthusiasm of God in you. When you meditate on those words, you're drinking deadly poison. That's what he says. Uh, that's what, he, what he's saying to us. Uh, when you drink deadly poison. Now, how do you drink it? When you're in the company of negativity, of uh, uh, unwholesome words, and those words are just not edifying see well it uh, that's listening to deadly poison you're hearing it and when you could not avoid hearing it and it just came out and now uh, that you are hearing it that's not going to harm you unless you start drinking it by meditating upon that negativity and you develop an affair, not an offense, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you become offended inside of you. When you become uh, offended inside of you, uh, that's when you begin to drink deadly poison. When you drink deadly poison is listening to your thoughts that says, well, you're not going to amount to anything. Uh, look at you. All these years, you've been exactly the same. There's no change for you. When you're receiving and meditating upon those words, you are drinking deadly poison. And you know what? Poison some will become dizzy, some uh, will lose their appetite, some will become uh, totally uh, uh, stressed out because there will be pain levels. Poison will cause certain pain levels in the body. And so you will have emotional pain by drinking deadly poison. You've got to have a clear mind. You've got to think appropriately and uh, your desires should attract things that will stimulate you, things that will build you up, things that will excite you. When you start uh, drinking deadly poison, it's when your desires or your meditations are on uh, words that are negative, uh, words that want to break you down, uh, memories of the past, and thinking that, uh, well, uh, maybe your, your family or your parent or uh, failed uh, some of you, while well, you're going to be next in line. That's drinking deadly poison. The Bible says, think on those things that are right. Think on those things that are praiseworthy. Think on those things that are excellent. Think on those things that are right, not trouble. Now, 
Don't settle for an average life. Do not settle for an average life. I'm encouraging you today. Do not settle for an average life. Okay? Avoid starting your day in neutral. You know, you know when, a, when a, v- a vehicle is in neutral, it goes nowhere. When a vehicle is in neutral, it goes nowhere. Hallelujah. Isn't that true? God bless you, Renee. All of you uh, value you. When, you. when your vehicle is in neutral, when you start off the day with thoughts that, that, that wants to just break you down, thoughts that says, man, what is wrong with life? What is wrong? Well, beloved, what is wrong today in today's world it seems to be right. And the things that are right seems to be wrong. What a what a way to when you wake up in the mornings and you think when I switch on that uh, television and and, and media, uh, you know the lies and the deception that comes across from certain entities, and they actually play the videos of what a person said and what another media is saying. It is just disgraceful. But I don't want to focus on that this morning. We should be, uh, or let, let me rephrase this and just be cautious. The Bible says, though we're in the world, we're not part of this world. That is the key. Though we are in this world, we are not part of this world. That means you don't have to drink all the stuff that is happening in this world by meditating upon and by uh, allowing those things to break you down or make you angry and bitter on the inside. Uh, You know, bitterness is not what we do towards somebody else. Bitterness is what we do to our own self. We poisoning, we will be poisoning ourselves if we become bitter. Now, uh, be like the two fishermen. There's these two fishermen, and uh, they got trapped in a storm, and in the middle of the lake, the one turned to the other and asked, should we, you know, just sit here, or should we row? And you know what? The wise companion uh, of that uh, uh, other fisherman said, why don't we just do both? In other words, go on the offensive uh, approach. Do not just sit in, and I don't like to say do not, because I don't want to impose on anyone, but sometimes we need to hear these words. So a better word for do not is avoid becoming passive and allowing passivity or lethargy or apathy to control The mind of Christ that is in you. The mind of Christ is way above these things. Way above. You've got Christ Jesus inside of you. You can rise up. You can uh, be in a position. And I pray this for all of us and myself. You know, all the time. We need to stay awake to take. Awake to take. Back what belongs rightfully to all of us individually in your relationship with God. That's why God instructed Joshua. Repeatedly, God said to him uh, in Joshua 1 verse uh, 6, uh, Joshua 1 verse 6 to 9, it says, you know, be courageous, you know, fear not. I'm just paraphrasing. Actually, that whole chapter of uh, Joshua chapter 1, read it, where God actually had to say to Uh, Joshua, now listen, Moses is dead. That means do not dwell on the dead. Dwell on the things that brings life. Hallelujah. Even the angel said to those who came to the tomb uh, where Jesus uh, uh, was buried, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Let's not focus on the dead things because you are the living you've got christ jesus inside of you you've got life and life more abundantly focus on things that brings life i want to repeat and that is avoid becoming 
Oh, don't settle for an average life. God has never called you and I to settle for an average life. The Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And that means as your soul prospers, so shall ye prosper in the natural. That's in 3 John 3 John verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you will walk in, you know, divine health and that you will be prosperous and so on and so forth, even as your soul prospers. Hallelujah. This year is vital. As you think in life and the things that you meditate on at that moment will actually become the outworking of who you are at that moment in the natural. And that's why we've got to stay awake in order to take hallelujah. I see my time is going here. Now, uh, don't settle for an average life. You know, God has given you gifts and talents. And if you've messed it up, join the club. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've messed it up many times. Uh, David has messed it up. And uh, God is still saying in his word, David is a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Now, when you've got a gift and a talent and you've messed up things, God does not remove his gifts and talents from you. God's uh, gifts and calling are irrevocable, the Bible says. It's irrevocable in the original language of the Greek. It's irrevocable. Uh, it will say, it's, you know, it's without a repentance. In other words, the gift is always there, but then you have to repent to activate the gift that is in you. Repentance, and that means realigning your thoughts with what is right. That's repentance. Realigning your thoughts with what is right is repentance. And then in Acts, where is it, 319, I believe it should be, it says, uh, you know, those who repent, times of revival will follow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I live a repentant life 24-7. I constantly make every effort to renew my mind. In my case, you know, uh, you might be different, uh, but in my situation, I study, 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 study. If you see what my uh, table look like here, uh, you'll just find books and books and books. I always try and make every effort to keep uh, ahead of the curve. All right. Now, uh, gifts and talents are there. God has given you a gift. God has given you a talent. Nothing can cancel that except disobedience, except wrong thinking, except living an average life. Let's not settle for an average life. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, that's, you know, the glorious church, the triumphant church uh, with the resurrected Christ, the book of Revelation. He says, you're either hot or you're cold. And I don't want to live an average life of an in-between and then one day I'm like this, then one day I'm like that for God. No, I want to live a consistent life of being hot for my God. Hallelujah. I want to be hot with love, love people. I want to be hot for, uh, you know, serving God, serving people. And uh, and now, now, now watch this. You know, I have to say to somebody, uh, and that is just because I am meek, and I'm not putting a badge on myself to say I'm meek, definitely not. I know who I am on the inside of, of myself. But just because I display a meek and a humbleness, do not take that for granted that I am weak, W-E-A-K. Definitely not, you see. Jesus was meek, he was humble, but they knew well, there was a lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside of Jesus. Even though he was the lamb, that lion will rise up and begin to clean out, cleanse out that temple, make a, a whip and chase them all out and what have you. There comes a time where the lion in you will rise up 
Now, having said these things, uh, I have to close, start closing. Uh, the, let me just get back to Joshua uh, 1 verse 6 to 9 and so forth. But read from chapter 1, as I've already mentioned. Uh, God had to say to Joshua, and Joshua is the aide. He is the assistant of Moses. So he knew that Moses died. But God actually had to come and say to him, now listen, Joshua, Moses is dead. There, there are chapters in our lives that should be dead. And we should not mourn over some chapters in our lives that maybe did not work out. Because if we keep uh, with excessive mourning, unfortunately, you'll become oppressed. And when you become oppressed, in Ecclesiastes it says, uh, and that's one of the books I wrote uh, as well, how oppression work, works. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes says it will be like a dead corpse, like a corpse walking around. That is what oppression does to a, a person. Oppression first comes at you, then it comes in you, and then it comes out of you. However, but let's get back to Joshua. So he kept saying to him, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous. Yeah, it's like God repeated that over and over to Joshua. And then he says, now go in and possess. God wants you to be a possessor. God wants you to possess more and more. There's more to life than where we are all at. But it's what we make out of life. You know, if we think we have arrived, the Apostle Paul actually cautions us. He says, he himself, I mean, he wrote like 75% of the New Testament under the unction of the Holy Spirit. He cautions. He says, I do not think of myself as arrived, but I press on towards a higher mark of fulfillment. Hallelujah. Give me just three more minutes. <laughs> it's always hard for me to close, and I try and keep these broadcasts to just 20 minutes. But uh, just give me like three more minutes. So Joshua had to start meditating on the Word, and he had to start seeing it in his mind that though he has come through 40 years of hardship in the desert, seeing all the stuff that Moses of experience and how uh, the, uh, the circumstances through people and love treated Moses. God had to awake Joshua, say, Moses is dead. So get up now and move forward with this assignment. I don't know why, but I feel somebody's going to listen to this uh, broadcast and uh, uh, God is going to speak to you. There are things in you that is looking for you to become the real you. I call that reinventing yourself. Maybe one morning I will talk about how to reinvent yourself, okay? So evaluate yourself today. Uh, define yourself through the Word of God and become refined. Define, D-E, define where you at, what is inside of you, and then refine yourself with the Word of God in repositioning yourself. And Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, cast off anything that hinders, and I'm paraphrasing, putting it in brackets, that hinders your progress. Run with perseverance for the race that is marked out for you has a good ending. God bless you richly. I want to thank those. Uh, let me just bring it up on your screen. Uh, if I can find it somewhere here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, for those of you that have gone to my YouTube channel, there's over 210 videos, inspirational, that you can watch from your smart TV, in your bedroom, living room, wherever, or on your phone. I just need a hundred subscribers and I'm almost there. You are helping me. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think I only need 18, one eight uh, subscribers. Now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then I will have a little bit more privileges and I can change some things 
and do live streaming from a different angle and so on and so forth. So go to YouTube, uh, type in, you know, Dr. Andrews Van Skalke. It should just pop up and uh, uh, hit that subscribe button. And it may ask you just to, uh, you know, fill in your password for Google, your own Google account, if you want to download Google apps and blah, blah, blah. It, it takes like three, four minutes. Just open it. Don't struggle with it. Don't strive. And uh, just fill in your email and put a little password. And there you are, uh, you know, sign in. And that's your, and write down your little details on a piece of paper or somewhere. You always will have it. Thank you so much for helping me as well. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Go and have a great successful day. In Jesus' name. Love you all. Bye now.